How would you describe the current trading environment in the Asia-Pacific region? I think it's quite clear it's brisk, and with that it's also very, very competitive. The Asia-Pacific region, region is, uh, is our fastest growing region for, um, for our tequilas and, um, and our rum, pirate rum as well. It's, uh, in total last year, Patron was up, uh, total portfolio, we were up about 22% in travel retail. But in, Asia, in the Asia-Pacific region, we were up uh, almost 30%. So a uh, very significant part of the world for us, and we're very excited about the future opportunities there. We've been encouraged by the massive growth uh, literally over the last two to three years. We're now working with uh, all the major global travel retail operators, uh, which means Travel Blue has been rolled out uh, more and more right across, uh, right across these regions. And in addition to that, with the launch of Tech by Travel Blue, um, that's really made a big difference to us. We've doubled our, virtually doubled our range. Uh, and we're now offering uh, in the Far East uh, and other countries and, uh, and elsewhere a one-stop shop uh, right across the spectrum of electrical products, travel accessories, etc. Well, I think China is still one of our most poten potential markets. Uh, we see, see some difficulties there in terms of legislation, especially uh, in terms of ingredients list. The legislation is changing, which is uh, forcing us to be really, really flexible, not to have too much stock, because if the legislation is changing again, you need to adapt everything. And uh, stickering is not really a hobby, so you really need to, uh, to put a lot of effort to be in line with uh, the legislation of the Chinese uh, government. Yeah, but still uh, working hard on it, because China is still a potential market. Well, for us at Braun, it's still a... Um positive move forward. We're growing. We have opened uh, some new accounts. Uh, Korea for us is a, a focus market there, uh, the, both the airlines as well as the ground shops. Um, we, we are trying to break into Australia, into some uh, stores there. It's a bit of a space problem uh, that they have and electronic product is not the key focus uh, uh, for them. but. We are working on, on, on solutions that uh, make it viable for them, so in, in terms of space uh, requirements, presentation of the product, and also to make it interesting enough for the operator to keep those products. For William Grant & Sons, um, Asia-Pac has been uh, highlighted as, as, our, as our highest future growth region. So um, the two zones for us are, are Europe and Asia-Pacific and obviously with Asia-Pacific showing, showing real growth. Um, we've decided to focus here, uh, I guess importantly we've got a, a new managing director um, in, in Justin Weston who is going to be based in Singapore from, from our Singapore office which I, I think shows the intent um, of, of, of where we're looking. So um, Asia-Pac fundamentally is, is critical to, uh, to the continued success of William Grant & Sons in, in global travel retail. The trading environment within uh, Asia-Pacific uh, is still a huge opportunity within the region. Uh, however, it's uh, also quite fluid in some countries within the region in terms of uh, the volatility uh, for both economic and political reasons. However, overall, uh, we still see that region as being a main growth driver for our business uh, in 2014. Which Asia-Pacific regions stroke countries have you identified for potential growth and expansion in 2014? Well, what comes to mind is all of them. But on top of the food chain, uh, again, obviously would be China, that we've identified as a huge potential market that we want to penetrate and penetrate deeply. It's taken, it's taken a number of years, but fortunately we're, uh, Patron Tequila is now in uh, most every major airport in Asia Pacific, um, including, uh, including uh, uh, Narita and uh, Singapore, and of course down to Sydney. Uh, where we have the most opportunity though uh, is in China, and I think we're, um, we're very close to, um, to, to finding some great opportunities in, um, in the Chinese market and some of the major airports in, 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 in that, in that uh, important country. Effectively, what's happened if we just go back very quickly, uh, China is one very good example where we opened up our own office in China based in Shanghai. We have our own sales team based in Shanghai looking after the whole of China. Uh, we are looking to, to uh, roll out more of our own regional offices uh, to support 
uh, the, local, uh, the local airports, airlines and so on and so forth, because we can no longer handle this centrally. Um, so China is, is certainly one area, and I guess somebody based around perhaps the Singapore area uh, who could look after the rest of uh, the other regions of the Asia Pacific from uh, various countries, Philippines, Cambodia, and so on and so forth. And as I say, we are dealing with uh, all the global duty-free operators, and we have to give them that local support. So the Far East, uh, and various reasons, very important to us. We have several white spots, and I think for many other uh, suppliers it's also a white spot. Australia is one of those, and uh, New Zealand. We are already there, but uh, still quite limited, and I think it's an interesting market, but it's completely different towards many other countries. And another area is Korea, which is a uh, high potential. Uh, the brands are really strong there, also in Australia, so it's definitely an option for us to go there more. Yeah. Well, as I said, uh, we want to uh, make a bit of a breakthrough in Australia and New Zealand. Um, also, we want to um, put more emphasis on India. Uh, we are reasonably confident we can do something at, at, at Mumbai Airport. We have been trying for quite some time to get into uh, Delhi Airport, the new airport. There is a good trading environment. We have been selling some products. Uh, but sometimes it's not so easy uh, to, to um, get them cracking. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, the, the other countries like uh, Malaysia and Thailand is doing quite well. And so you know, we're quite confident that we can further grow with them. Um, I guess for us it's very simple. The, the real growth for us is coming through, through key operators. Um, and so where, we, where we're working very closely, uh, with people like DFS, um, King Power, and Tassa Meng, we see um, real opportunity. So obviously with the, the, the new um, concessions at Changi and DFS taking over Hong Kong, uh, we've, we've done a lot of, of work building uh, shopping shops, building, building new bespoke furniture and really getting behind uh, the teams in terms of training. So um, for us, it's major hub airports. Uh, our focus is entirely on um, key cities. Uh, and following nationalities as they travel. So the major cities of Asia Pacific, exactly where you would normally expect, the, the Shanghai's, the Hong Kong's, the Singapore's, the Sydney's, um, Bangkok and a couple of others. But we're very focused on, on key cities, key hub airports. That's where we really want to focus our attention this year. Well, clearly uh, China is very much on the radar, uh, still very much so. But what we are seeing is a number of other countries uh, developing quite rapidly, both in terms of aviation and in turn duty-free sales, notably Indonesia. And we're seeing that in regards to international retailers uh, being involved more in these uh, emerging countries. So I think China certainly is going to be the main driver. Uh, but what we are seeing is other countries, uh, such as Indonesia, uh, as well as Vietnam, coming along quite strong.